Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters. I know it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I've done one of these videos and man oh man, I, one, I can't be more grateful and thankful to the customers out there and to the clients who are keeping me busy. That's why I haven't been able to do so many videos as I would like to do. But there, I, there was a time that I couldn't wait to get back and do these tutorials or these informational videos for you guys because there's a lot of information out there that um, I wanted to share with y'all and just to put the information into your hands of what's happening out here in this leather world. And so this is a three for one. I'm going to put three different um, uh, informational uh, keys uh, into this one video so it won't keep you long and then we'll get back to doing some uh, other uh, tooling tips and carving tips and all of that kind of stuff and selecting the right grade. Actually, let me do a four for one. So I'm going to put a fourth in there just to, since I mentioned the different grades uh, uh, of level. Let me do a four for one. So first things first, here's a, uh, one of the questions that uh, from one of the workshops that I've done. Um, uh, uh, one of the students had asked, I don't say students, I'm going to say one of the fellow crafters in the workshop asked this question. And they talked about when to apply niche foot oil. Now, you guys know from previous videos that I've already done, I'm a fan of niche foot oil. Got about a big gallon. Uh, let me see if I can pan this around real quick so you guys can see it. You might can see it on the end of the table down there. Yeah, I think you can see it. Big gallon. Uh, you guys know I use that stuff, um, and I'm a fan of it. I love it. I love it. So the question was, um, when to apply niece foot oil? Do you apply it before the dye or after the dye or whatever type of paint or whatever you're trying to do? Now, myself, depends on the project. Uh, even if you're going to dye it, um, you can dye, apply your niece foot oil onto the flesh side of your leather project. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the exterior side, especially if you've already dyed it, if you already applied your resiline, your top coat or your super sheen, whatever type of sealer that you put on there, you can apply your neat foot all on the flesh side. It doesn't always have to go on the grain side. And I know that some crafters out there might be like, no, you can, you can put it on this side. That's all fine and well and dandy. There's nothing set in stone. And that's one thing that I want you crafters to understand about this leather world. Now you will have 5,000 different crafters tell you something different. There's only a small lane that we all agree upon, and that's only dependent on the general principle. The general principle is oil, um, leather has to have oil. That's the general principle. So um, where to apply it, a lot of us will, will vary in that. Um, now, as for me, and in my experience, and for those who subscribe to this video, and to those of you who subscribe to this channel, let me tell you how the cowboy does it. Um, if, if, I, if I know I'm going to be staining, dyeing, or painting a project, I would apply my oil, my Neesport oil, on the flesh side. That's the rough side where they pull the hide away from the meat. So uh, the grain side is the smooth side. Um, so I'll apply it to the, the, the flesh side. Now, if I'm not painting, dyeing, or staining, I would apply oil to both sides. Now, here's the key. And for me, let me say that again. Let me iterate that. As for me, the leather cowboy, each uh, application of oil, Require, I let mine absorb, fully absorb 24 hours. So 24 hours is the key thread in, in all four of these, with the, with the exception of the last one on grade, uh, grade selection. 24 hours is the key. 24 hours for your oil to fully absorb into your leather so you can go on to the next step. 
uh, even on the dyeing process, dyeing, staining, or painting, even resolene, top coat, super sheen, any of those applications, a full 24 hours between each application. So if you are applying uh, your dye, let's just use uh, whatever color dye that you're deciding to use. Once you apply that to your leather project, give it a full 24 hours to fully absorb into that leather as well as to come up with the color that you like. Now you can sit there and put coat after coat after coat after coat on top of each other at one setting. And then once you get ready to buff that out, guess what? You still gonna have to probably go back and apply another coat on there to fully get an even, uh, even dye process, uh, application on there. But 24 hours for it to fully absorb into the high. Now, why is that number 24 so important? 24 is so important. You don't want to put a project together and you didn't allow a full 24 hour time period for everything to absorb into the leather. And then three, maybe not even three, might be a month or two months down the road, you have a customer or a client that says, hey, I need this to be touched up again. So that's why that number 24 is so important. So on your dyeing application, on your oil application, 24 hours before you put the dye on. Because if you put the dye on top of a non-fully absorbed oil process, then it's going to do some freaky looking stuff with your dye. So you give it that full 24 hours before you put your dye on there. Even if you put your paint on there, if it's not an oil-based paint, that Neat's Foot Oil is going to counteract with water-based paint, dye, or stain. It's going to counteract it. So that's why you want that full 24 hours in there. And then, before you put your top coat finish, your Resoline, or your Super Sheen, or whatever application you're using to seal that, if you put that on top of a non-24-hour dye period, a non-24-hour oil uh, period, a non 24 hour paint period, when you put that top sealer on there, it's going to counteract with everything else that's going on up under it. So, to, to raise the quality of your work, to raise the quality of your craftsmanship, to where uh, you don't have a lot of touch up work further down the road, give it 24 hours. Even when you're taking a project on, fully equate all of those steps into your project. So don't sit back and tell a customer, I mean, we know how long it takes to sit and cut out a belt blank, tool it up, and then it's ready to rock and roll. Don't tell a customer that, oh, I'll have this ready for you in two, three days. You're cutting yourself short for one as a craftsman and you're diminishing the quality of your work as a craftsman. So when a, if a customer comes into the shop and they say, hey, cowboy, I want to order one of your belts. You know what I tell them? It's going to be two weeks on one belt. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks is a time frame. And then when a customer hears that two-week uh, interval in there, Oh, this guy really must gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna really take my time on your project because I just don't sell leather work, I sell leather art. And I want that particular piece to be like a, uh, uh, like a painter painting or a sculptor. I want this thing to last and I want you to see the quality of the work. So not only am I taking my time and my tooling and my carving work, I'm also equating the time for the dye, the oil, the top coat seal, as well as the stitching and everything else. So two weeks is the minimum on any project that I do. And some projects take longer than that, depending on how much detail in the carbon I'm going to be doing. Uh, even when I'm, if I'm doing a top coat, uh, a resisting process, it's 24 hours between three coats. Three. Three ladies and gentlemen, three boys and girls, three coats of just straight resoline or super sheen or top coat finish, whatever finishing I'm using, is 24 hours for each 
coat to fully absorb. If you don't, you'll be setting yourself up for failure. Now, the last one real quick and uh, grade selection. And let me tell you something that I just recently learned. And I want you guys to understand this. Don't get caught up into A grade, B grade, C grade, D grade. It all gets tanned in the same drum. <laughs> now, it doesn't matter if you're shopping from Tandy, Springfield, High Crafters, Weaver, or whoever else out there, Frog Jelly. It doesn't matter where you buy your leather from. Do not get caught up in the A, B, C, and D. It all comes from the same tannery. It all gets tanned the same process. Now, why do they select A, B, C, or D? That depends on your tick bites, your range marks, uh, if it's a brand that's uh, in the cowhide. Um, sometimes, um, which is something popular right now, is there are a lot of customers, they want to see that Farm brand, that farmer's brand, that cattle rancher's brand. I've seen tons of product out there that has that brand visible into the finished piece. And a lot of people are capitalizing on that. That way, that customer, they know that that came off of a real cow because it has the brand from the cattle rancher himself. Now, a lot of cattle ranchers, they'll want, they'll want to cut that out because that's their mark, that's their brand. Uh, some of them don't care. But uh, that will affect the grade. So if, if, if you're buying a single shoulder or a side or a whole cow and you see that big hole cut out, that's where that cattle rancher wanted to remove his brand. Now, that brought that particular hide from an A and B down to maybe a C. But it's the exact same quality hide as an A. Um, a lot of times now what we call range marks um, that cow might have scrubbed up against a barbed wire fence and had an overheal scar or a scar might not have healed properly. That's a part of the grading. Uh, sometimes you'll see two little holes in, into the hide. That's a tick bite. That may not have that that tick may have really latched on and buried down in there. That affects the grade. But now, as you guys know, my motto: minimize your profits on the front end. Minimize your spending on the front end to capitalize your profits on the back end. So you can get a B or a C grade if you are working a project that you can work around those blemishes, um, mind those tick bites, around those range marks, or around uh, the branding where they cut the brand out. So if, um, if, you, if you're buying a C grade, it's the same, same good quality height of leather, but you just have to move and work around those particular pieces. And don't be, don't, 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 don't get it twisted. A lot of customers really like that, especially if you're doing a lot of tooling work. If you're doing a lot of tooling work and a lot of carving, you're going to cover right over those tick bites and range marks. You are going to cover right over the top of that. It doesn't affect the quality of the level. Now, another thing real quick, and this is the last thing. Um, you may have some hides to where in the, the skinning process, when they skin that hide back, some of the meat might have left. Uh, some soft spots in the hide. Again, it doesn't affect the quality of the work. You just have to learn or know how to work around those soft spots. So when you're out there choosing your uh, your hides, and if you if you are close to where you can go to your leather supply place and you can choose and pick your own hides, flip that hide over. Flip that hide over. One thing that I check for more than anything else in the world is the tightness of the fibers behind on the back side, on the flesh side of that hide. Let me show you guys real quick what I'm talking about. The flesh side. Now you see all of these little holes right here? All of this stuff counts as a grade. Now you can tell right down here it's a little weak to where they stretch that hide out. 
So part of this, this part here is the primary part that I'll be using. Now, the strongest part on any cow hide is toward the butt. The butt end of that cow or that calf is going to be the strongest part of the leather. So I would flip that hide over. Don't pay attention so much to the grain side, this smooth side. Flip that hide over and look at how tightly woven. Let me see if I can adjust my light so you guys can see. See how tightly woven this is? That's the thing that you want to look at. And you can see the weak parts around the belly where the, the, where the hide is not as thick or as strong. You can see that. That's the part. Now, this is a B-grade level. And it doesn't affect the quality of the work because look here. When I get ready to tool and work that strong, that, that good part of it, and you can tell right there where they, the, some of the wrinkles into the cow hide, you want to use the strongest part of that hide. And you still can use the weak side. Um, most times I'll take the belly uh, parts of that and I would make belt keepers out of, or I would make some straps out of. Something that doesn't require a whole lot of tension and wear, or, or it's just mostly for decoration, but I utilize every part of that. I just don't use that part into the strongest part of the piece that I need for it to stand up and last. Hey, we're at the 16 and a half minute mark. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for keeping the cowboy busy. I love doing this. Uh, I just started doing my workshops, so I'll be traveling around throughout the country, uh, putting on workshops, and so you guys stay tuned for that. You'll see uh, the video, or you'll if you're checking out my, my social media platform pages, you will see the calendar of events in the states and cities that I will be in, and it'll be showing you guys... Uh, uh, we'll be doing a sandal workshop, we'll be doing a carbon workshop, um, We'll be, this is going to be doing everything. So, and it will be the bang for your buck. So when I say that I'm coming to your city near you, make sure you schedule off four hours. We're going to do four hours during the daytime to just focus on the workshop part of it and get you guys going to expanding your product line. And then later on that evening, I'll be doing a business workshop to show you guys how you can go out there and find the customers that will pay top dollar. Now, this is one thing that is taking the, the, the newer crafters are taking over by doing this is because you don't have to have a traditional brick and mortar shop in order to have a successful build business. You guys don't. This is the thing that's changing. And I'm going to leave you with this right before I get ready to go is you have to keep up with the times and this is the business part. You have to keep up with the times or the time will pass you by. Hey, this is the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the dirty south. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep it crafting.